it took a long time to happen, but uh, uh, Matt and Trey over at South Park has decided to finally weigh into this in one of their specials, which you can find over on Paramount Plus, uh, came out last night. Uh, South Park enters the Pandaverse. And, uh, you know, Matt and Trey have a have a way of just boiling down the truth of something in simple, direct and obvious terms. And uh, and there is this moment uh, of elation when a topic is about something all of us on the fringe have been screaming from the mountaintops. But mainstream media pretends they can't hear us. OK, uh, but when South Park says it, it just can't be ignored. Right. Uh, and I'd be lying if I didn't say there was, I felt a moment of victory last night while watching this special Yeah, for all of us in the community. Yeah. Um, when, uh, and when we, when they went to the Disney, uh, uh, executive meeting mm -hmm. and, uh, some guy was like, I don't know, I don't want to say it, but, uh, I think, uh, I think it's Ka Kathleen Kennedy's fault. <laughs> I, right. As soon as Kathleen Kennedy's name comes out, it's like <laughs> Disney, then Kathleen Kennedy and, and Cartman's having the nightmare. Right. Uh, yeah, that was that was something special. Let me uh, let me just break down real quick kind of what the show is about, and then we can go into talking about it a little more. Uh, the episode delves into the fact that Hollywood, specifically Disney and Kathleen Kennedy, uh, are replacing everyone with diverse women and LGBTQ people who complain about the patriarchy. Uh, we get a universe switcheroo with Cartman and an alternate reality black woman who comes from a universe where all the South Park characters are some version of an ethnically diverse woman. And Ken, Ken is fine. <laughs> what? Kenny? Ken's, Ken's alternate character is super hot. Oh, Kenny? Yeah. Kenny. Sorry, Kenny. Yeah, Kenny, who, uh, who actually we can hear what he's saying. It would have been cool if they would have had her mumble. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that would have been kind of that yeah. a little harder. But, you know, she's Asian. So you've got the, she, uh, Kenny's Asian. You've got um, Stan, who is Hispanic, I believe. Hispanic, for sure, yeah. And you've got... Uh, who, who's the Ky kid with the Kyle hat? is like Kyle. Uh, I guess black Indian. Indian. No, Indian. Indian. Yeah. And then Cartman's a black woman. So that was hilarious. <laughs> uh, and and as you go throughout, if you know the South Park characters, they go through all of them at some point in this. You even get uh, Butters, uh, the two Hunter guys. Oh yeah, who are you know everybody's changed. So, anyways, um, the kick here is that when the character uh, is that the characters are the same, but they've they've all been swapped. And thanks to Disney, who used the Panderstone to make some of uh, to make the same lazy movies over and over again, uh, it would eventually open up the Panderverse, <laughs> where an alternate reality Cartman Kathleen Kennedy demands that they put a chick in every movie, make her gay, and make the movie lame. Uh, Bob Iger and the rest of the Disney execs are terrified of her and does exactly what she says, despite knowing that their stock numbers are going down and everyone hates the movies. <laughs> I mean, how perfect, Brian, is this? Is this? No, Just, it's I mean, perfect. It's, it's so on the head. It's, it's crazy. I'm, I, I was sitting there watching it last night and I was like laughing. It was it was the second I saw Bob Iger. I saw. I was like, no, they didn't. They did. Oh, my God. I'm like, they did it again. You know, yeah. because they always these guys always find a way to talk about things that nobody's talking about. I mean, it's really brilliant. Uh, to, let's you know, you always want to go out there and find the audience that's being cucked. Right. You know, which is which is, you know, our entire fringe community has been talking about this for years. But the but we're ignored by mainstream media because. uh they don't want to give us the airtime. They don't want to have any sort you know, because if they were to talk about it, they would say that it's unreasonable. And there's a scene in the episode um, that I kind of wanted to go through real quick. If you're cool with it. Yeah. That, that, that delineates this idea perfectly. Okay. And it's the scene where, uh, where, where black woman Cartman, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how to, how to uh, say this. Um, black Cartman. She actually goes to PC principal, right? Oh Yes. Um, so, and the boys say, I, they, they've just been minding their own business. Um, but she keeps saying she's Eric Cartman, right? PC principal asked them, what's wrong with that? Uh, <laughs> the boys stare at him incredulously, incredulously as if to say, well, isn't it obvious? Uh, they say it doesn't make any sense. PC <laughs> principal says, oh, I see. Uh, there is a diverse female where Cartman used to be. And you don't like that. They say, well, it's not that we don't like that, but don't you think it's weird? PC principal says he doesn't see a problem with it at all. And if you boys don't think Eric can be a black woman, then maybe the problem is you. 
right? <laughs> Where have we all heard this before, guys? Right? Yeah. Uh, they the, real quick. Let me, the, oh, so go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I'll finish it and then you do it. Okay. okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, they say. Uh, they say you think it's nor it's perfectly normal that Cartman is suddenly a black woman. <laughs> no, they say, they ask PC Principal this, to which PC Principal says, "You probably don't think that Indiana Jones uh, got replaced by a female. You probably don't like the idea that Indiana Jones got replaced by a female either, huh? Uh, you probably have a problem with Black <laughs> Spider Man too." To which the boys say, "No, no, we love Miles Morales. It's a totally different uh, thing. It's not it's well, a different the, character." <laughs> yeah, they say it's a whole different thing with its own constructed character and narrative. But this is the same old Cartman. The only difference is, is you put a black woman in his place. <laughs> right. To which PC principal tells them, "You boys feel your white culture is being threatened, so you lash out with racism. And if you say anything more about black woman Cartman, Cartman not making any sense, you can have three weeks of detention." And of course, PC principal is taking the place of mainstream media, which tries to punish anybody who even speaks about this. Right. Right. Go ahead with what you're going to say. That's the whole scene. Well, yeah, it, it, it sums it up perfect. So he took two examples, one where black Spider-Man is completely fine. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, it's cool. Miles Morales is a cool character and it's a completely different character. But then also Indiana Jones being replaced by a woman. It's literally just. Let's just replace this character with a woman. No, no reason. No, they, she she didn't earn it. There was there was no, no kind of setup to it. It was just you know what uh, this person is a badass, uh, and she is a, a quarter of the age. <laughs> she has none of the wisdom, and here we go. Just just throw it in there. So it's two extreme opposites of characters that make no sense. Like the most it recent seems like Indiana Jones has was the catalyst because they bring up Indiana Jones many right. times in this. I feel like Indiana Jones was the catalyst in this last movie that came out was the catalyst in them going like, we're finally pissed off. We're done. Little, guys... Mer Little Mermaid mm -hmm. wasn't mentioned, but I, I feel like that was probably in there, too. It was in their, yeah. their minds. That actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, so the the episode is is. It's really so cleverly done. I, I love the way they also they all they do this with all of their their great. Uh, episodes like this they kind of weave two different narratives in here right. so you've got this whole like the pander stone they've created this this uh this this thing that disney basically was using this stone so that they didn't have to write anything interesting or do any work <laughs> right there's like this moment where kathleen kennedy admits to like they're just like lazy writing right so they use this pander stone but they use the pander stone so much that it opened up the pander verse. The pander stone which, allows us to take uh, things we've already done and and regurgitate them. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And just regurgitate. Yeah, exactly. But it was done so much that it like broke things. And uh, they ended up with an alternate version of Kathleen Kennedy. This who, is one of my favorite scenes. When Cartman is in the classroom. Uh -huh. And they're all talking about like uh, white male privilege or whatever. <laughs> and uh, he's like, oh. <laughs> He's in hell, right? He's, He's in, in hell. hell. So, and then uh, the teacher <laughs> comes in. He's like, ah! <laughs> well, yeah, because everybody is, is. And they they do go through and kind of show the ridiculousness of of That's swapping right. out characters. And when you could just make make your own characters, right? To so just make. And, of course, the secondary story here going on, the which B is story, also. Yeah. An L, yeah, the B story, which is also pandering, of course, centers on Randy. And, uh, and it's focused on. Uh, taking digs um, kind of at young people initially. Um, but what I thought was interesting was that they actually took the opportunity to um, to take digs at all kinds of things. So they're taking digs at young people, their phones, AI, right? They go into AI. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, all of those things, good. right? It, there's this wonderful scene. And I got to tell you, it hit so personally for me. Randy uh, comes into his kids and he's like, you kids don't know how to do shit right you know and it's like this complaining and at first i'm like oh my god you know that's, that's what i'm saying about this young generation right now all the time like they don't know how to do shit right so randy's like come over here i'm gonna teach you how to do something today right. you're gonna learn how to do something you're, we're gonna we're gonna learn how to fix this oven door i i, right? I, I goes, actually thought he was gonna start like screwing something yeah yeah no it was great and when he reached into his pocket and pulled out his phone and and then started and you and he says and then you call the handyman and I went oh my god <laughs> because listen for those of us who are not handy myself included 
it was this moment of like, oh, Jesus Christ, that's what I do, right? Like, I'm yeah. like, I don't know how to fix this damn thing. I got to call somebody who can I fix it. I gotta be honest, when I was watching this, I was like, the second he pulled his phone, I was like, oh my God, that's Shane. <laughs> it is Shane it's right totally there. It's me. I'm, I'm yelling I, at my kids. I fix how to everything. Do shit. I'm the opposite of that. I can fix everything. Yeah. In fact, I prefer to fix it myself because I'm so cheap. <laughs> yes. Well, I wish I could afford to be cheap, but I just don't have the, the knowledge. Because I went to college and didn't learn how to do anything. I, I didn't go to college. Anything. I learned how to do stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's funny because I've ha- I've run into these situations where I mean I have trouble getting handymen to come over to my house now, and then they want to charge me all this money. I think to myself, my God, that's more money than I make per hour. Which they're probably thinking, well, then you should fix it. You know, if you if you don't want to pay for it. Yeah, this so, is the last time I had to fix something. It was uh, it was uh, uh, the dishwasher, which came with the house. And it's a really old model and it just wasn't working and it was smelly and whatever. And so I was calling the company and I'm calling, uh, you know, uh, whatever the company is. And they're like, uh, you know, you gotta get a certified repair man. And I'm calling the certified repair man. He's like, I, I, I can come out. It's going to cost a uh, $200. Uh, and, uh, and I'll, you know, that money will go through to whatever repairs I have to make. I'm like, I'm sorry, $200 just for you to come out and look at it. He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you know what, dude, um, I'll figure it out. And I pulled that sucker out of there, and my God, this house was made like 80 years ago, so it was <clears throat> it was pretty rough underneath there. And uh, I I found the problem; it was clogged up or whatever, and I fixed it. I fixed mm. it. It took me like, it literally took me like 72 hours of time over a period wow. of two weeks. It took me a long time to figure out. I had to look things up and diagrams. Yeah. But dude, when it was done and it was working, I felt like a rock star. Well, yeah, and there is that element of. Yeah, but you, you know that. what? It might have only cost me seven two hundred dollars, and I did spend about two weeks trying to fix it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so there's something to it. But they they go through this. So you got this whole episode of the pandering, and I love how how they make fun of so many things. They make fun of like uh, undocumented workers at Home Depot, but instead of like now all those people are rich. Oh, that and now they're though, making fun of us having when, to stand in front of. Yeah, Home when Depot. he was talking in Surrey though, when he goes uh. Uh, Suri, uh, uh, let me find some cheap immigrants or whatever. And I was yeah. like, I'm sorry, that, that I didn't say that right. And then he just repeated it, but he the exact same thing. But he said Suri first right. or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And all the doctors and lawyers and psychiatrists mm-hmm. and geologists are out there now. Oh, and every hilarious. time a handyman comes by, they got spinners on their car. Right. It just it keeps getting bigger and better. Like there's richer. They they want to like take down the 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 university, the college. Right. They're yelling down the college, but they don't know how to build the. The catapult, uh, the catapult to destroy the college, right? That it's just great. the whole thing was so fantastic. I love how they end up in space and they're poking fun at Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. And they talk about f- fighting MMAs and buying everything, including like Instagram and, you know, like Twitter is kind of the jokes on Twitter. That was great. Twitter, but that was joke. so great. <laughs> they end up out in space. Randy's Randy's uh, uh, response when they, they when they were like, we're going to fight each other. He's like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty crazy. <laughs> So, I mean, they did a great job of, of doing the ridiculous. And then they bring it home uh, by having this this whole alternate reality thing. They make fun of um, of the of multiverse the multiverse. They said I it was la- it's lazy writing. Exactly La-ly- what we've writing. been saying for like two years. I mean, these guys, it's like they're my spirit animals. Yeah, I, I do believe, you know, and then you got Bob Iger here. I thought it was interesting. They come to a solution. And the solution is, of course, that. That Eric Cartman and Kathleen Kennedy are stuck in the same university, that that di- universe, that diverse universe, uh, where all the South Park characters are, are some form of woman, diverse woman, and they they start working together to get out of the universe here, and uh, and they, there's this moment of you know Cartman kind of represents uh, the fan base that was frustrated by what the, by this garbage that 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 Disney and other Hollywood, not just Disney by the way, Disney's taking it on the chin here. Because they're an easy target and they, they're probably the biggest culprit. But all of Hollywood is guilty of this. Most of Hollywood. And uh, they come to some determination here that that Kathleen and basically that Cartman, you know, yeah, I wrote those 15,000 letters. <laughs> Cartman is the uh-huh. one who wrote all 15,000 letters calling her the C word, which did happen. 
Right. Right. And so they, they kind of, I, thought it was like, I was getting thousands. She goes, he goes, well, it wasn't thousands. Maybe like, you know, like 15,000. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I wrote, I wrote all those. That's great. Uh, so she basically apologizes for, you know, reacting to him being angry at her for making shitty stuff. And then as a result, her making more shitty stuff. So like the whole thing was like this buildup, almost like gang violence where it's like you do something bad to me and I do something bad to you. So she apologizes for destroying something that he loves and he apologizes for calling it the C word. And and uh, and there's this kind of coming together moment where she agrees going forward. She's not going to destroy the things that he loves, that the movies not going to make shitty movies anymore. And then uh, he agrees to, you know, not not, you know, be so harsh. Uh, but Bob Iger says, essentially, yeah, yeah, Kathleen, we're going to do that. Yeah. And it, which is the guys at South Park basically say that even though there's been this coming together of this agreement, Bob Iger in the studio is not going to stop doing what they're doing. Right. Didn't you get that feeling? Oh, yeah. They're going to keep doing it. Right. So it was like this whole thing of like we can come together and even like the people who work for the studio can come together. I mean, because obviously Kathleen Kennedy gets all the blame, but it's not all her fault. I mean, she's not she's not the the reason why it's all bad, but we she kind of gets that moniker right right there's a lot of people responsible for how shitty everything is and and at the top ultimately it's it's guys like bob Iger, right who are responsible and i think they do a good job of pointing that out and they don't pull the punch i know a lot of you guys are going to watch this and think oh they pulled the punch you know they they pulled the punch at the end but they don't because they leave bob Iger there holding the responsible bag i think yeah every time uh the cartman version of uh kathleen kennedy i guess the diverse kathleen kennedy whatever right or I didn't know what universe that was from, but it was weird. Yeah, he was it was eating weird. his friends. He was eating end. his friends and aliens. Um, no, but every time uh, she had a movie idea, it was like, make it gay and black. Yes. So that's what it was. It was it, here. I got the exact words because I thought it was hilarious. Um, yeah, she says uh, she came into the she came into the thing and she's like, uh, and it didn't matter. It was like they're doing Bambi. She's like, I don't care. Make it a chick. Make her gay and make it lame. <laughs> That's what she was saying over and over and over again. Oh, like everything. Another thing I, th I thought was a, 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 a joke you might have missed was when they were trying to, when uh, Kyle was trying to figure out the right pronoun. And he's like, mm -hmm. oh, him, yeah, uh, her, they, it, I don't know. <laughs> that was, yeah, they were in PC principal's office. They didn't know like what to call right. the new Cartman. And that's kind of what we all go through, right? It's confusing mm -hmm. as hell. Yeah. So I just feel like they did a really, if you guys haven't had a chance to go watch it, please go watch it. It's, it's great to have something mainstream, you know, um, kind of agree with us to some, you know, kind of come and say, look, yes, none of this makes any sense. And, you know, all the things you've been saying, we were yelling into the wind is finally right. being heard by somebody who, who, uh, who's legitimate, I guess is the best way to look at it. I don't know if, if, uh, if Trey and Matt are, I mean, they're mainstream, but they've always just sort of done whatever they wanted to. So, no, but well, they're on like we were talking about before. They're uncancelable because um, they're telling the truth. And if right. anybody were to come against South Park, I mean, imagine the news media attack South Park. Oh, they've tried. Right? What's going to happen? Back in the day. South now. No, now. Let's yeah, say yeah. they come at them now. South Park's just going to come right back at them. Right. It's a fight that they don't want to get into because they're on the wrong side of it.